Hello and welcome to The Drug Trip. This channel is here to feed the curiosity of those who would like to gain an insight to the effects of various drugs and substances through user experiences and stories, with our main goal being to entertain and reduce harm and abuse. We post regular trip reports every few days, so if you do enjoy these, we would really appreciate it if you subscribed. And more importantly, we love to hear our viewers' thoughts, opinions and experiences, so please leave something for us in the comment section and we may use it in a future video. Enjoy and be safe. I had tried Detura three or four times at low and moderate doses and found it to be heavier on side effects than psychedelic ones. But being bored one Sunday afternoon, I decided to take out the envelopes of seeds I had culled from the Detura plants I'd grown in my garden the previous summer and do a righteous doze. I'm an experienced user of psychedelics and I believed that I could handle it, even with a new roommate in the house. So I pulverised a load of seeds with a hammer and put them in a pillbox. I retreated to my bedroom and started sprinkling the ground up seed mix into water and drinking it. It's hard to tell exactly what my doze was, but after several glasses of water slash detura, the physical effects kicked in hard. They were very unpleasant and I was immediately sorry that I had done it. I felt a nausea-like discomfort and the usual savage case of dry mouth. My limbs were difficult to move and even limited movements felt sickening. About four hours after taking the dose, the trip started getting hallucinatory. I was drinking lots of water to offset the dry mouth, but to no avail and going to the bathroom often, but urinating was difficult and not very effective. The bathroom looked normal, but when I looked down into the toilet, the water was covered with a layer of gelatine with rainbow highlights. Occasionally, I saw small ticks on the wall, and upon closer look, they were spiders. By around 11pm, my roommate Jenny was asleep, and I was tripping hard, but didn't necessarily realise it. Everything was very dreamlike, and during one of my journeys to the bathroom, I saw Jenny there, sitting on the toilet with the lid closed, looking at me. We stared at each other for a long time, and I looked down momentarily, and when I looked up at her, she wasn't there. She never had been. And so began a series of hallucinations. In the house's second bathroom, I saw Jenny standing next to me, looking at me. I turned to her, resolved to muster a reassuring smile, but when I turned I realised that what I had really been looking at was my own reflection in the mirror. I was very alarmed and thought, this is madness, but my reflection was wearing the placid smile I had put on for Jenny, and my calm expression was somewhat reassuring. From that point on I was very messed up and was moving around, bumping into things, hallucinating and tormented by mental confusion. I had minimal short-term memory and at one point noticed that I had left the bathroom sink faucet running full tilt for an unknown length of time. Colours and sounds were amplified. There were times when there was lots of people in the room having a party. When I tried to talk, they'd stop and listen, realise that I was incomprehensible and then ignore me and continue their conversations. At some point, I saw one of the tick spider hybrid creatures on the bathroom wall put my finger on it to confirm it really wasn't there, and when I lifted my finger, I saw a nail hole underneath, and I pressed my finger on it and felt pain and plaster cracking to confirm that it really was a nail hole. I laughed at mistaking a nail hole for a spider, and then left. The next day I realised the wall was perfectly smooth, with no holes whatsoever. After a troubled night, I awoke thinking the trip was over and saw that things weren't quite right. My battery charger was unplugged and lying on the other side of my bedroom. A rented DVD was by the bed with a pair of scissors from the kitchen drawer. My toothbrush and toothpaste and my socks neatly arranged on it. I walked into the kitchen and the answering machine was unplugged. I had no memory of doing any of these things. I went to make coffee and the coffee pot had vanished. All of my toiletries were gone. Later, I found my razor in the washing machine. A $300 paycheck had been taken from my cupboard 
and was in the recycling bin. A tube of my roommate's toothpaste was in the kitchen cupboard and so on. I thought the trip was over and was glad, but after making some coffee, I noticed the paint was moving on the patio windowsill. This marked a second phase. The physical effects had lessened and I was capable of thinking. I started smoking marijuana and spent the entire day lying on the couch, smoking pot and drinking coffee, looking out at my backyard garden and listening to CDs on headphones. I was having lots of entertaining hallucinations. It was sunny, also windy, and the plants were blowing around and they looked like witches, trolls and hobbits. There was a community of strange and absurd characters in one of the rhododendron trees. The music sounded great. I looked at my hand and it was shiny. It had a waxy appearance and layers of it dissolved like layers of paint or melting wax. And finally, I was looking at the hand of a creature from another world with a thumb and two fat fingers. All of this was very enjoyable and I was lucid and even had a short conversation with Jenny, who was really there at that time. Later I went for a walk to the park and all the trees had faces and were smiling at me. The plants seemed to be bending toward me, crying out for affection, each one saying me, me, demanding to be stroked and hugged. I did comply, but I didn't go overboard with it. Four days afterwards, I felt foggy, and a day or so later it occurred to me that Jenny couldn't have possibly slept through all that noise that I was making. I had even stumbled and crashed loudly into the wall near her bedroom, and I thought that maybe I did something I hadn't remembered, and that maybe Jenny actually had been in the bathroom one of those times. All seemed normal, however, around two days after the trip, I noticed Jenny was packing her stuff into her car trunk. She packed a bunch of stuff and then left without explaining and didn't come back that night. I was certain that I had done something during the trip or that she had countered me in a very messed up condition and was frightened. I thought that I was lucky she didn't call the police. The day after she left, I emailed her and told her how sorry I was, that I would be very cooperative with her, whatever she decided to do from there on. She responded and basically said that everything was cool and she didn't know what I was talking about. She said she was only visiting a friend and didn't tell me because she was in a hurry and would be back the next day. So it goes with powerful psychedelics like Detura, which temporarily obliterate stinking processes and memory. Although the second 12 hours or so of my trip were quite satisfying, the first half was extremely disorientating, dangerously so. I would also say that I will never try it again, but I do wonder 